Well done, Calvin. Something tells me that Calvin could be here for two more hours. <laughs> Calvin, what a great presentation. Thank you very much. I, I have to admit, I don't know much about history, but I think poor old Leonardo da Vinci is probably turning in his grave going, if these architects do anything else more crazy, they'll beat me. But uh, I think it's a great demonstration of where the technology is going, what's capable. It does demonstrate, as some of our friends here from the contractors know, that these fantastically complex geometries are also fantastically complicated to build. So it's putting a huge challenge on the construction industry to deliver these brilliant designs. Our next presentation is from Summit. We've got Gordon and Alex here. They're going to talk to us about BIM to FM, I believe. Yeah. You have got three minutes. <laughs> now, uh, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to give you your slot. We're running about uh, 12 minutes behind schedule, so we're not too far off. So you've got your half an hour. We look forward to your presentation. Yep, thanks, guys. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gordon, and this is my colleague, Tom. Uh, I will make it really short. Uh, I will make it, uh, make it uh, 15 minutes. I will try my best to make it 15 minutes. So today we are going to talk about the uh, beam to fm uh, This is about some of the experience we have uh, done in the past uh, half years. Uh, we have a few uh, projects about the FM stage uh, usage of BIM. So uh, maybe let my colleagues start first. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, no. so, uh, well, this is the world we live in, uh, where design and construction is on one side of a cliff and the facility management is on the other. And a lot of useful information is collected during design and construction, but none of it carries over to facility management. Now instead, we have to spend hours after hours trying to salvage and recover whatever pieces of information we can and because we need it. Uh, well, sometimes we can find some, well, one, some of the pieces of information after some efforts and other times we can't find those pieces. This gaps in information is a problem constantly plaguing facility management and it is a problem we well, we will try to solve by applying BIM. Now, these are the current practices to obtain as built information. The first one as built drawings is supposed to give us geometric representation of the built environment. And the second one, a second one operation and maintenance manual is supposed to give us information on the equipment and the surfaces of a certain facility of a building and the last one, the CMMS, is supposed to be a digitized data storage system which should make facility management more convenient, more efficient. Now here we have the three main problems we tend to face when it comes to SPILS drawings. They are inaccurate, they are contradictory, and sometimes they are non-existent. Now, uh, case in point, we have here a beam model built from structural drawings, but when we overlap it with a architectural CAD drawings, we can see that one of the wall is a little bit off. And the question here, here is which, structure, which discipline has more credibility over the, the other one? Should we follow the structural drawings as the model is model here, or the architectural drawing? And what if we are facing with something different, like a drainage pipe and a plumbing pipe, which ones we follow, and what about the other one? Now, there are a lot of reasons for this kind of, well, issues. Maybe the drawings were not updated, but the building was being renovated or repaired. Maybe the change was too minor, and, well, the efforts to release, release new drawings was too tedious. Now, the reasons do not matter, the result does. And the result is that as built drawings, do not serve the intended functions. Uh, now here we have listed the problems with the O and M menu. Well, the O and M menu is supposed to contain every single piece of information we need to maintain a facility, and equipment, warranty, uh, manufacturer, those kind of information. The thing is, it's usually extremely thick. 
and we talk about thousands of pages, kind of big, and then it's disorganized, and it contains a lot of unnecessary information, like a company background or development history, which I do not require in trying to operate the sump pump in front of me. And they often have kind of low resolution, uh, being the result of scanning a photocopy, and they have no connection with spill drawings. A certain equipment may be named one way in the spill drawings, but another way in the O&M menu, which make it kind of confusing to try to connect the two. And another issue is that oftentimes certain equipment exists in the drawings, but not in the O&M menu, which you keep asking yourself, where is the equipment in the O&M menu? Or maybe it's the other way around. And now we have come to the CMMS, which the CMMS is supposed to contain information on uh, uh, maintenance schedule, work history, supposed to remind us and make our life easier in facility management, except that it requires a lot of time and effort to, re to develop it, to input all the information or the data into it, and then we still have to train our staff to use it and it's just a tax based system. We have to visualize the built environment ourselves. It doesn't contain any, well, 3D modeling. It's kind of difficult. And it's like the ONM menu, it's not really connected with our drawings. Like I said previously, some of the equipment in the drawings do not exist in the CMMS and vice versa. So we can try to, we will try to solve some of the previous problems with BIM, since BIM is supposed to be an accurate representation of the graphic, geometric, and textual information of the built environment. But when we try to apply BIM to FM, uh, we are usually faced with two scenarios. One, where we are faced without any as built BIM models, and one where we already have a BIM model built during design and construction. Now, when we don't have a BIM model handy, and we have to have built one entirely from scratch, we have the following options. If we're dealing with a more recent buildings, we will be given CAD drawings, or if not, more data buildings, maybe printed drawings. The point is, both of the drawings are not as, as accurate as we would like them to be, and we will have to supplement them with punch cloud and site widgets. Now here we have a sample punch cloud, uh, a page that is a little bit dark and it will be a little bit difficult to see. It is still a fairly authentic representation of that built environment. As we can see here. Uh, and uh, we can always perform site twisted. I mean, site twist is the most inconvenient, but nothing gives you a better understanding of the built environment than being physically in it. And after we have built a model, we still have to input the information and to, to, to decide how much information to input into it, we have to decide a level of development. A higher LOD means more information, but we must ask ourselves, do we need the extra information? Because that extra information re require more time and more effort. If we don't need it, then why waste the resources on it? And after we know our level of development, we can extract our information from the CMMS, from the O&M menu, from the building users menu, etc. So by combining the geometric information and the textual information, we can finally create a B model. Now, not all facility management personnel are familiar with BIM. So there's a need to make BIM more approachable uh, so that first-time users can utilize the basic functions from the get-go. And this raises the need for a BIM viewer, which 
Should allow. Which allow us to well access basic information, navigate through the B models, and in general make make our life easier when we come to facility management. Uh, so, uh, so, so. Uh, okay. So uh, originally we are planning to have a look of the beam viewer, but I. Believe we have running out of time, so uh, we we go back to the uh, presentation first, and then uh, if there are some times at uh, at the back, uh, so we can uh, show more uh, content in the uh, beam viewer. So uh, in that way, with a beam viewer, we have a one-way path to the uh, FM world, but uh, it is still a uh, really hard path, like uh, like this one, just running on a rope. Okay, and then uh, now, what can uh, be better? So we can uh, use Kobe, which is a standard. So what is Kobe? Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, Kobe is a information exchange standard, which is uh, established in the uh, United States and also adopted uh, by the United States uh, National Beam Standard and also British Standard uh, 119. Two hyphen four, which is uh, just released this month. Okay, we you using uh, Kobe as a information exchange standard. Okay, so a uh, really quick review of the uh, structure of Kobe. Uh, there are a few different colors here, meaning uh, when we will uh, filling up the uh, information in the Kobe design stage, building stage, and some comments which are available in all the states. And also, uh, there are um, different sheets here. Here is a rough list of uh, commonly used uh, of uh, working sheets here for Kobe. And this is um, how it looks. It can represent in the form of Excel with a lot of different worksheets. Uh, this is one of the worksheets here. Uh, but uh, this is some fake data here uh, as our project is still running and we have not yet get the permission to show the real copy we have produced. So you can see uh, most of the information can be exchanged in this format so that it can be uh, better for, uh, for the CMMS or and for the other uh, parties to uh, use the information. So we can compile uh, the uh, Kobe uh, data in several ways. The first way, you can manually input it. Just like uh, at the Excel, you can manually do it, uh, uh, do the Excel. But of course, this is not uh, the, the great way to do this. Uh, and then we have uh, some kind of tools developed by uh, different uh, vendors. One of this is a Kobe uh, extension uh, for it. So, uh, and then just a few clicks, you have a Kobe worksheet. Um, so a Kobe uh, worksheet is acts as a adapter. Uh, I have to make it clear that uh, not just after a uh, server click and then we have a uh, Kobe and then uh, we will be happily ever, ever, after, ever after. Because uh, Kobe is an adapter. So we have to know what to transfer to the uh, other system. We have to define what kind of component and what kind of information we have to put inside uh, the exchange format. So uh, this has to be done in a very serious uh, lots of meetings we have done uh, on what to include in what kind of uh, formats. Uh, this is some tedious uh, process. And then uh, we have uh, the Kobe worksheets and also the three models, we can put it in some CMMS system. We have a sample here, uh, which is a, a system, uh, which can import some uh, Kobe worksheets inside their system. And also putting the BIM models inside the system so that in the CMMS system, they have the models and then they can click on the uh, components and see the history and also the information come from the uh, BIM models. As a result, we have a 
better road to uh, to bridge uh, the uh, two cliff together. Uh, in that way, currently we have uh, a single way uh, process. We have beam model first, and then we have the copy worksheets exported, uh, and then we import it in the CMMS. It is only one way. Uh, I believe in future there are maybe several ways uh, uh, back and forward. And sometimes maybe uh, some CMMS can talk to the Beam uh, software to, uh, directly. So this is uh, some kind of uh, vendor development. Uh, of course, uh, maybe in the afternoon uh, sections, there are more and more uh, insights uh, from other speakers. So uh, at this moment, I believe I have some, maybe five minutes, three to five minutes to show uh, the viewer. So, so this is the sample viewer. Uh, so you can see the viewer here. Uh, this is the same one. Uh, uh, Calvin using uh, Fuser, uh, and then uh, this one is a models here. Uh, besides showing uh, the fancy uh, uh, models uh, done by Kelvin, uh, we are doing a really simple models here, uh, which is a demo model only. And then uh, we have put some information inside uh, the components here. We can walk around the models and then can you pick on some components to see the information here. So you can see the information by clicking uh, the components. Uh, for some of the components, if necessary, they have some uh, hyperlink to the uh, uh, to the information required. So we, we can click on the uh, the link and then uh, show it. This is a good one for uh, for existing FM staff because uh, they may not familiar with the uh, BIM software, but uh, for this kind of game uh, game engine and simple interface, this is a, uh, some of the good way for them to start. Uh, using uh, BIM. Sometimes maybe if they have more interest and then they uh, may try the BIM their own. So, okay. <laughs> Just for uh, for them to have some index of the uh, uh, documents because as we have said that uh, the documents, many times they are not mm. well organized. So uh, we can do it in this way to help the FM staff to do the uh, do their work with a uh, easier way. Okay, so thank you, everyone. <laughs> this is all our, our presentation today, and hopefully you have a nice lunch. Thanks, Gordon. Thank you, Gordon. Well done. Thanks, Tom. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll all agree that this morning has been all about the information in BIM. So we're going to give the eye a more prominent position on the stage, if he doesn't break it. <laughs> so it is all about the data. Oh my God. And right now it's all about lunch, because I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. So for today's lunch, you've all got your delegates pass. Lunch is in the Marriott Hotel, which is no more than a three to five minute walk. To get there, you go down one level. So there's an escalator outside, you go down one level and then take a U-turn to your left, and then follow the signs out towards the Marriott Hotel. You cross over a footbridge, and you're in the Marriott lobby, and then you'll see an indication where the lunch is on the other side. So please be back here at 13.40, 2 o'clock. So if we can have everybody here back by... Um, I would recommend you bring your bags with you. There's a trade fair on, there's people moving around, so please don't leave anything valuable in the room. You can leave your packs and your, your booklets, but don't leave anything valuable in the room. See you all at 2 o'clock. <laughs>